Hi, I'm State Representative John Hoadley, and we're going to talk today about patient safety in Michigan hospitals. During today's show, I'll be interviewing a local registered nurse about safe staffing in the hospital setting and its relationship to patient outcomes. After that, we're going to be hearing from a representative of the Michigan Nurses Association. It's a nursing advocacy group here in Michigan that's working to establish safer hospitals. Uh, so to start off, I want to extend a warm welcome to our first guest, Lori Batsloff, who is a registered full-time nurse here in Michigan since 2010. Um, Lori, you know, you've just had so much experience here We're working with long-term care, medical care, surgical care, and critical care. So I know that you have a lot of experience when it comes to patient care in Michigan. I'm also really excited that you're one of my constituents here in the 60th district. So I just want to start by saying thank you for being here and taking the time to talk to us today. Um, but can you share with us, what are some of the challenges that you face as a registered nurse? Um, sure, John, I'd be happy to. I really appreciate you having me here today. Um, first, I'd like to tell you a little bit about why I became a registered nurse um, in order to better answer that question. Um, I worked as a nurse's aide in a city hospital for um, about 13 years. I worked with really great nurses and I really loved my job. Uh, the best thing about my job was spending time at the bedside with my patients, getting to know them. Um, and the nurses that I worked with, I think, saw that I was able to see the big picture with people. I was able to pick up on things that I thought maybe weren't quite right. And they encouraged me to continue my education and uh, become a registered nurse, which I did, and uh, graduated from nursing school in 09. And, um, I've loved my job ever since. I love being a registered nurse. Um, so the biggest barrier to my job is time. Having the time at the bedside to perform those assessments, to make those observations. Um, as you know, there is no law in Michigan um, right now that would limit the number of patients that can be assigned to me during a shift. And that's very dangerous um, for the patient, and um, it has been shown to cause poor outcomes when the RN has um, more than um, an appropriate number of patients under his or her care. Now, I know that we have a lot of really good hospitals in our region, uh, but you know, like you were saying, short staffing can cause a lot of problems. So just talk to me a little bit about what are some of the things that can happen when we have a short staffing situation in a hospital setting? Yeah, sure, John. Um, you know, nurses know from our own experience, and the research will back us up on this, that um, when nurses don't have the time at the bedside to um, assess a wound as often as it needs to be, or to change a dressing as often as it needs to be changed, um, or if nurses are so busy that medications are passed late, all these things can cause poor outcomes for patients. Um, and as I said, the research does back us up on this. Um, if you're a nurse on a med surge unit, for every additional patient that you are assigned, the risk of death for one of your patients increases by 7% oh. for every additional patient that's added to your workload. And um, a, n another research study I read shows that if you are a patient in the hospital and you have a heart attack on the night shift, you are more likely to die from that heart attack. Wow. Because, in many cases, hospitals staff fewer RNs on the night shifts. Wow. I mean, one thing that, that's striking to me about these statistics is that these are repercussions that could reach anyone, right? Short staffing doesn't, uh, crosses all barriers, it doesn't discriminate, and so it's a question about resources and time. Now, do you hear similar stories from other registered nurse or nurses across the region or the state? Yeah, absolutely, John. My colleagues and I hear um, stories all the time um, about unsafe staffing levels in Michigan hospitals um, and how RNs are stretched too thin or um, forced to work mandatory overtime. And RNs know that they need that time at the bedside to provide quality, safe patient care. Um, so this is, staffing is really um, one of the major concerns for RNs around Michigan. But you know, if we're talking about sort of time and or a question of just making sure that we're spending enough time with each patient, patient, we're not working those that overtime. Why don't nurses just say no? Well, you, nurses are really put in an impossible situation um, when they're told that they need to stay. Um, nurses don't want to leave um, patients with um, inadequate 
care. Um, they want their patients to be taken care of, and they want their coworkers um, to be taken care of. They want their coworkers to be able to uh, do their job effectively. Um, so, you know, we, we're kind of guilted into it sometimes. And unfortunately, when nurses are able to stand up and say, hey, you know, I really i am feeling pretty fatigued. I don't think that it's very safe for I'm me to just stay. just too tired tonight. Yeah, I, I just really can't. I, I just really feel like it would be a bad idea for me to stay another four hours. Unfortunately, there are managers out there that will um, bully them uh, by reprimanding them. Nurses could be terminated. And unfortunately, uh, some nurses have been wrongly told that if they don't stay, it would be patient abandonment and they could lose their license. And we're not just talking, though, about uh, regular shift hours. We're talking about overtime a lot of these times where they're being asked to stay even longer than they're scheduled for. That's correct, John, and fatigue is uh, really a very serious issue. Um, I don't know if you remember, this was many years ago, there was a study done comparing um, fatigue and fatigued driving to drunk driving. Mm -hmm. And shortly after the study came out, um, rules were put in place for truck drivers um, to keep everyone on the road safer. Um, so, you know, we need to um, recognize that nurses are professionals and they know um, how many hours they can handle and we really need to be listening to the uh, professionals about what kind of workload they're able to safely um, handle. Now, previously you talked a little bit about, um, you know, your colleagues and I know that moving to sort of team-based medicine and, and making sure that the patients are at the center of that team-based approach is becoming more common. So talk to me about why registered nurses are especially important in when we're discussing the patient care and quality care. Yeah, if, if you've ever been a patient in the hospital or if you know someone who's been a patient in the hospital, you know that the person that spent the most time at their bedside was their registered nurse. And that really is where the registered nurse needs to be. Um, the registered nurse is the part of the team who is constantly assessing, constantly observing, and needs to pick up on those small changes um, that really may be very significant and need to be reported to the physician um, and need to be dealt with in a timely manner um, in order to ensure the best outcome for your patient. So are there some industry guidelines or some recommendations for how many nurses we should be having on a shift? Uh, yes, John, this, uh, the Safe Patient Care Act um, lists ratios that are specific to each unit. Um, so for example, the ratios would be different, say on a med surge unit, an RN um, could have up to four patients under her care or his care. Um, however, on an obstetrics unit, um, your patient condition changes as their stay goes on. So a person um, in early stages of labor, um, one RN may be able to have up to three patients. Um, but certainly when a patient is in active labor, they need that registered nurse to be one-on-one -on -one with them. And then again, following a safe and successful birth where a mother and baby are both doing well, one nurse may have four mother-baby couplets. And the ratios that are in this bill are based on evidence-based practice. They are based on research that shows when you staff at these numbers, um, patient outcomes improve. And if you go beyond these levels, patient outcomes are poor. So you just referenced the Safe Patient Care Act. I'm really proud to sponsor that bill here in the legislature. Uh, why don't you walk us through some of the main points of the Safe Patient Care Act? Yeah, there's, there's three main points um, that I'd like to hit. Uh, the first one is um, the ratios that are specific to each unit and that those numbers um, are required. It's required that the hospital would staff registered nurses at, at that level at all times. So no matter the day of the week, or the time of day, um, those levels need to be met um, in order to ensure good outcomes for our patients. Um, the second thing that it does is it would ban that mandatory overtime, um, and except for in cases of emergency, um, which I think um, most people know healthcare workers and especially nurses are always willing to step up um, in the case of an emergency, and we understand that's part of the job. Um, but we do not want um, mandatory overtime to continue to be used um, as a staffing solution. Um, it really should be in cases of emergency. And the third thing that this bill does that is so important is it holds